integral. In this case, everything is linear. Uh, all of these are uh, lines, straight lines, so I should say that. Um, well, calculate the area then. How would you calculate the area? Uh, yeah, add. Uh, you've got a, uh, this nice rectangle plus, a, I guess, a triangle plus another rectangle. This is a trapezoid, if you like. If you remember from geometry. Yeah. What's the area of a trapezoid? One half of parallel side. Good. Into the average of the two bases times the length. Yeah. Good. Uh, well, do whatever you want, uh, what, whatever you need to do to calculate the area. Uh, do you want a second to do it? Yeah. I'll give you a moment. Yeah. Uh, be careful with the units. <laughs> cubic centimeters need to be changed to cubic meters, and the kilopascals need to be multiplied by a thousand to get pascals. So do that. Yeah. 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 Calculate the three areas and add them together, basically. Yeah, it's a. Uh, so. So if you're wondering, uh, the area here uh, is uh, 250 if you convert everything to the right units. But it's uh, the work done would be negative, and it's many joules. Yeah, I mean, I of course it's no, but that's why it's kind of small. All right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I mean, kind of. So, so they they did a lot of patching. So you got Boyle's law and whatever his name is law, like like three or four laws. So the first one is like they held the temperature constant and they said, okay, so what happens to uh, the pressure and volume? And they were inversely proportional to each other. So they're like, then it has to be the pressure times the volume equals to something. And then they're like, all right, let me keep the volume constant, like this piston thing, just shut it uh, closed and then increase the temperature and ask what happens to the pressure if it increases. And then, okay, what if I keep the pressure constant and it increases the temperature, what happens? Well, the cylinder actually, the volume expands. And they patch it together. And, uh, but then you can, there is a more uh, mathy way to do it. Okay. Um, so let, let's uh, discuss a more, uh, uh, instead of just the calculation, in general, if the process is isobaric, I'm sorry, isochoric, the process is isochoric, meaning the volume does not change. How much work is done? So let's do, uh, let's write them down. Uh, so isochoric. Meaning the volume is the constant. Then uh, what's the work done? Well, let's see. Here's P. Uh, no, here's B, and here's P. If the volume does not change, so let's say you had this volume, and then you the, you went from here to here, so that the volume did not change at all. You're pushing the piston, but the piston hasn't moved. You could not compress the gas, it didn't expand it. So how much work is done here? What's the work done on the vertical here? Zero. Yeah, it has zero width, so it's zero. Yeah, the work done is zero. Does that make sense? Because if V is constant, then dV is zero. So yeah, it's just zero. So the work done is equal to zero in this case. For isochoric, the work done is always zero. And just think of it this way. The cylinder, the piston is just shut. It, it hasn't moved. You're pushing, but it just did not move. So you're not doing any work. You only do work if you move the thing, if you're making it get the uh, the, 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 if you change the volume, the volume gets smaller or larger. Okay, so that's the first one. How about uh, isobaric? Isobaric, again, it's terminology, so it just means pressure is constant. Okay. Isobaric means the pressure is constant. So let's think about what's happening there. So here is the volume. Here is the pressure. So you're changing the volume, but maybe the pressure uh, or the, uh, the pressure simply does not change. You're just doing that. So let's say here's V initial and here is V final. This is simple. The area is easy. The integral is easy. It's just the area there, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the whatever the pressure is times the change in volume. Right? That's the area. It's P times V final minus V initial. That's P times delta V. So in other words, this, uh, let me write. The work done is negative the integral of P dV, right? But I'm guaranteed that P is constant. So I'm integrating from V initial to V final, so I got negative. If P is constant, pull it out of the integral. So I got P, the integral of dV from V initial to V final, and uh, so that gives me what? Minus P times V final minus V initial, right? Integral of dV is, is V. And so this is minus P delta V. That's the work done in an isobaric process. Yeah. So you can actually integrate it once and for all. Okay, how about the work done in a an isothermal process, if the temperature is constant. Yeah. I have three variables, uh, pressure, volume, and temperature. Uh, and I want to uh, figure out what the work done in each of these processes. So let's do the other one, the third one, isothermal. I want to, again, I want to do this integral. W, 
And by the way, uh, isothermal, if it here is V, and here is T, maybe you were here, and now you're here. And as somebody emphasized, yes, it is. Just so that's safe to say. This is isothermal. <coughs> And I want to uh, get this area. Oh, very good. Oh. Uh, we need to use the definition of work and then employ our uh, ideal gas law and see where we get. So here is an exode. I want to do this minus P dV from V initial to V prime, right? From V initial to V prime. But you see, the pressure depends on the volume. So I can't just integrate it like that. But I know this. I know that PV is equal to nRT. And so uh, P is just nRT over V, right? So this will give me the advantage that the temperature is constant. So I'm going to substitute nRT over V for pressure and see what I get. So let's see where this takes us. So we get minus the integral uh, from V initial, V initial to V final. Instead of T, I put NRT over V. And RT over V, dV, right? Again, NRT is constant, so pull it out. And so you get minus integral, no, pull it out first. N R T integral of V initial V final of uh, D V over V. Right? D V over V. So what's the antiderivative of one over V? Natural, natural log of V. Yeah. So it's natural log of V. So you get uh, I didn't put that in the minuses. So you simply get uh, oh let's get it here. You get W would be minus n r t ln of v final minus ln of v initial but the difference of the logs would be the log of the ratio of those volumes so v final over v initial right yeah. now we can go back to volume and pressure if we like uh, so yeah, so this is this is pressure. Let's say this is P initial and this is V initial. So I can go back now and write this. Uh, since uh, yeah, let's do some side work in here. So I know that uh, I can write it the temperature is constant, right? So I know that N R T since it's constant. It's equal to P1, P initial, V initial, or it's equal to P final, V final, because it's constant. Mm -hmm. So this product is equal to NRT, but T is constant. So the product has to remain constant. So it's equal to P1, or uh, I should write P initial, V initial, and that's the same as P final, V final. So I can replace NRT by uh, P initial, V initial, or P final, V final. So I can write it this way, another way, minus uh, P initial, V initial, ln of V final, V initial, and that's the same as minus P final, V final, ln of V final, V initial. Everything? That's the chord. examples before we get to heat. Or actually one example. So, uh, by the way, you should get used to, I mean, you know, our book, you took 130. A lot of times in the examples in the book, or even the problems, of course, I would not do that in the test. I would give you the constants that you need. But in the book, it says, for example, like seven grams of nitrogen gas. 
you're supposed to know that nitrogen gas is diatomic, meaning it's N2, and the molar mass is uh, 14? Yeah, 14. I, I don't remember it myself. <laughs> uh, so it's 14 grams per mole. And uh, yeah, so we're supposed to kind of know the, uh, when we get to specific heat, for, for example, it assumes that you should, uh, you go back to the table in the book and then figure out what the specific heat, let's say, of iron or water. Uh, so it just says it is iron and you're supposed to go back and figure out what it is for iron. Uh, but of course, in a quiz or a test, nobody memorizes this, so it's given to you. Yeah, if you need it, yeah. Um, so uh, the, the example here says, a cylinder contains seven grams of nitrogen gas so, uh, yeah, time to erase. Okay. So, uh, by the way, I didn't mention this. Maybe I should have. I wrote it, but I didn't say anything. Um, a lot of you already uploaded your worksheet zero and worksheet one. Mm -hmm. And some of you even uh, uploaded homework one. Homework one is kind of short, not that long. Homework two is longer. Uh, so. And all of them are due at 11.59 on Tuesday. Um, I would definitely finish them before Tuesday, because uh, you might want to study especially homework one and worksheet one for the quiz. Um, and the quiz on Tuesday uh, from 12, uh, 25 minutes long, it covers uh, chapter 18. I think I have two problems. One of them is similar to the homework. And uh, let me just say, since everybody's here, it's similar to a problem where you take a uh, some kind of a cylinder filled with air and you dip it in water and it asks you about some kind of a, how much does it compress or something. It, it's in a, it's one of the problems of the homework. Uh, you should recognize it. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I forget. <laughs> uh, it's probably both temperature scales. Wasn't it, wasn't it, yeah. Wasn't it a diving bell? Or? Diving bell or whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah. that thing. Yeah, good, good memory. Uh, yeah. Can you remind me again if the quizzes are open notes or not? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I never even mentioned that. I don't think I... So I'm going to say it for the first time, not even a reminder. Um, what do you want? Or what do you think? <laughs> so uh, let me ask. Achilles student, were, were they... Did Achilles allow you for open notes? Yeah. Or? Well, it was online, so like... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. In, in my online class, I always allowed open notes, open book. In, 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 in the classroom, uh, I usually allow one page of notes, and you make it. You make your own notes so that there is value in making, you know, you're actually making your own sheet. Uh, there is some value into that, and I think you had that. No, yeah, we, actually, in person, we just let us use anything. Cool. Because he made his own problems. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, since I'm explicitly saying it's, uh, there is a problem from the book, so you should, uh, yeah. Yeah, let, let's do this. Um, a sheet like this, eight and a half by 11, uh, with anything you want on it, front and back. Cool. You can type it, you can write it, you can, but you cannot share it, okay? You cannot share it it's, uh, during the test. I mean, if you want to photocopy it and your friend forget to make their own, that's fine with me, okay? So this is also um, quizzes, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, all right. Test quizzes. Uh, here's the thing, though. If you find yourself trying to pack stuff into the sheet, it means you're okay. not understanding the material. Uh, or, I mean, it's good, like uh, as a safety thing. But, uh, like, if you really like depend on like packing stuff, you should not be packing much, because all these like three, they, it shouldn't involve any memorizing, right? It's it's a quick thing to derive. Yeah. Um, all right. So that's uh, any questions as far as these things are concerned? Yeah. So let's let's go uh, with this. And also, when you upload, this was rare. I think it happened to about two students. Please make sure you upload in PDF format so that I can at least see it. Like sometimes people forget, especially Mac users, they upload in some kind of, I forget what the format was even called. And I can't see it. In and, uh, no big deal, I just put zero and uh, I write a comment. Please upload again and I will update your score. That's what I say. And then as soon as you upload, they give you back the points. Yeah. 
Yeah, so yeah, uh, so me too. In online, I, I was open book, open mode. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if this is the most, but is it, would it be okay to like point to the like problem that we, because you said the, some of the uh, examples in your public book, right? Or similar questions in the book, would it be like nice if you could uh, point to like an actual number of like things that could be if I remember, I would say take notes on that. Okay. I would say make a note of that. What was it called? The diving bell? And I, I usually don't say what's coming, but it's the first quiz. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. You just post it. Yeah. Post it. Why not? Let's tell the comment. So let us uh, get to the next problem. Uh, about uh, something uh, isothermal. And so a cylinder, it has seven grams of nitrogen gas. So here is a cylinder. Uh, and two. Nitrogen, seven grams. Seven grams of uh, N2 inside the cylinder. And uh, the volume compresses, it's getting compressed. So if it gets compressed, what does it mean? Is the work done on it positive or negative? Positive. Oh, here is, it used to be here, and you made it smaller. I heard the positive, I heard the negative. Positive. 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 Yeah, you pushed on the cylinder and you made it move in the direction of your push. Yeah, you made it shrink. The gas did negative, negative. The gas got compressed. Yeah. So uh, we have uh, V final is, uh, I think, one half of the initial, let me read again. Yeah, until the volume is half. And the temperature uh, is constant. Uh, T1 or T initial equal to T final, it's always constant. And it is uh, 50, uh, 80 degrees Celsius. And the question is, uh, how much work was that? So this is isothermal process, right? So we have a handy formula to derive this thing. The work done is minus N R T ln of V final over V initial. So yeah, why not use it? So first the work would be minus N R T ln of V final over V initial. Minus, uh, how many ends are there? And then R is 8.31, right? The temperature, you need to add 273, right? You can work with degrees Celsius. It's uh, uh, K. And in Kelvin, when you add 273, it's 353. So this is 353K. So, Three, five, three. I will get to n in a second. And then the natural log of, if V final is half of V initial, so V final divided by V initial, we get one half. One half, yeah. That's half. <coughs> See, I want, we need to get a positive uh, W, right? Because the work done is positive. There is a minus sign there, but the natural log of one half turns out to be negative, so it would be a plus. itself is one half of the initial, right? Okay. Yeah, so it would be a half. Okay. Yeah. And add here, so nitrogen gas has a molar mass of 14 grams. So one mole of nitrogen gas, if you have one mole, you would have 14 grams. Uh, I'm sorry, not 14. Uh, that's nitrogen atom. If you have nitrogen gas, it's diatomic, so, so you have 28. A mole of them is worth 28 grams. You don't have 28 grams, you just have seven. So that's a quarter mole, isn't it? It's a quarter. So remember, N is the mass, uh, is the mass 
of your, uh, the mass of your sample divided by the molar mass. The mass is seven grams. The molar mass is 28 grams per mole. And so uh, you get 0 0.25, right? 0 0.25 moles. So this one is a quarter, 0 0.25. So uh, we'll do that. And I think I have 508 approximately. The work is Typically, if you compress something, does it get hotter or cooler? Hotter. Uh, hotter. It gets hotter. How are we keeping this the same temperature? Compressing it, but cooling it as we press it. Yeah, yeah, that, good. Yeah, th that's right. So what you do is uh, you take your cylinder and dip it in a swimming pool, let's say. So that by swimming pool, we usually call it a reservoir. We call it a reservoir, meaning it's really large that its temperature is not affected by what by your little gas sample. So when you put it in the swimming pool, let's say the swimming pool is at 80 degrees Celsius. As you compress your gas, your gas, sure, tries to get hotter, but any uh, heat that it tries to acquire, it will get dissipated in the swimming pool. And the swimming pool just remains at 80 because it's uh, yeah. a large swimming pool. Won't it rise just a little bit? Yeah. 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 So that's why they say a reservoir, meaning it's infinite. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there is no such a thing. Yeah. Uh, but it's like if you take an ice cube and you throw it in the ocean. <laughs> the ocean temperature, it would rise really tiny, I mean, uh, get lower, but not much. Yeah. Uh, so let's get to, uh, now the next topic is, uh, is heat. And uh, yeah, 20 more minutes. So heat is the energy that gets transformed because of the difference in temperature. It's microscopic. So... Um, for example, if you put two things in contact with each other, well, our ice cube with a hot coffee, the ice cube will uh, get hotter and melt, and the coffee will get, uh, assuming the coffee is hot, right? The coffee is hot. Yeah, so uh, it, it, it will cool down. The coffee will cool down, the ice cube. So the temperature, the uh, heat will flow from the coffee to the ice cube, not from the ice cube to the, to the coffee. Yeah, because of the difference in temperature. If they have the same temperature, will heat flow? No. no. Yeah, and uh, and this happens because something is hotter, we'll see in the next chapter, means the molecules in it are moving faster. And something is cooler, it means the molecules in it are moving slower. And when you put fast moving molecules and they collide with slow moving molecules, on average, what happens? Will the fast moving molecules move even faster? Or they, yeah, they slow down after the many collisions between them. The slower ones, they acquire some higher speed on average. And the fast moving ones, they will lose some speed on average. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that is, uh, uh, that's that microscopically. Um, yeah, <laughs> I heard inelastic or elastic. Elastic. Usually we assume they are elastic. Of course, we're making so many assumptions, uh, but uh, yeah. <laughs> we will, uh, let's see. Uh, the June experiment, because usually, like in the, think of it like 1700, 1600, you consider, you didn't know about atoms, right? I mean, they didn't know about atoms at the time. And so, um, kinetic energy typically, it's, you know, it's my keys moving. But I don't know that they are made of atoms. That there are atoms that are also that are also moving. So the two su uh, subjects of work and you know pulleys and everything were separate from the calorimetry for for like things get hotter or cooler. So um, 
the connection came from where is it? Uh, James Jewell in the 1840s and did the following experiment. Uh, it's uh, you might have seen it maybe in chemistry, the Jewell experiment. So you can put uh, a beaker of water on a burner on a stove, and uh, it gets hot. Or he did the following experiment. So you can have uh, make a rod like this, take some puddles. Uh, and this uh, this rod can uh, start spinning. It stirs the water. And the way he did the experiment was uh, he had some kind of a shaft like this, wrapped some rope around it, you know, a pulley like this. And uh, yeah, you have a mass, a mass here. And this mass will have uh, a potential energy MGH, right? You release it from rest, but the mass drops, it starts to fall, and the rope here starts to unwind, and this thing starts to stir the water. And then uh, made the connection between the potential energy you lost here, so let's say it goes very slowly, by the time it arrives to the ground, it's basically not moving, right? It's barely moving. So all this potential energy went away. Where did it go? It went to heating the water. Then you measure the temperature of the water, and it's actually hotter, hotter by a certain amount. So they had the measure for that for the potential energy, people measured in joules. And this one was measured in calories. The, the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of water by one degree, of a kilogram by one degree Celsius is, uh, uh, is I think, uh, is called the calorie. And it turned out to be one calorie, one calorie would be, uh, 4.186 joules. This is a small calorie, a calorie with a small C. Yeah. Calorie with a big C, the food calorie, that's actually a thousand of these. It's actually a thousand, yeah. So one calorie in the, uh, like if you, I don't know, something, uh, if it says one calorie, I don't think there is that many of them. That's actually 4,186 joules. Yeah, so that's a lot of joules. Um, so anyways, and then Athens, of course, was discovered, and then the kinetic theory of gases, we, we know that higher temperatures means they're just moving faster on average. Okay, um, and this will bring us to the first law of thermodynamics in a second. And so let me just mention here a few things. It says the units of heat are a calorie, or a joule, 4.186 joules in one calorie. Um, just to straighten out some uh, some uh, some words here, you got temperature. Temperature measures what? Temperature. Uh, it, it is, a, yeah, but we haven't talked about that yet. It's, the, it's a measure of the energy. Uh, but it measures how hot something or cold, right? Yeah. Uh, I just wanted something really simple. Yeah, how hot or cold something is. And then heat, heat is the energy flow because of a difference in temperature. The energy that flows because of a difference in temperature. So heat is not the same as temperature, right? So you can have something, water at 100 degrees, and another sample of iron, let's say, at 100 degrees, will heat flow from the water at 100 degrees to the iron at 100 degrees? Or, no. Yeah, so it will not flow because even though both of them are really hot, 100 degrees is fairly hot, boiling. Um, so heat is the energy that flows because of a difference in temperature. And then the thermal energy is the energy of our system because of the, molecule, because of the motion of the molecules that are in it. Okay, now the first law of thermodynamics says, if you want your system, if you have a system and I want to change its energy, I can do work on it, I can do work on it, or I can add heat to it, or take away heat. Okay. So I can do work on it. If my work is positive, if the work done on it is positive, its thermal energy uh, will, uh, will increase, assuming there is no heat leaving. And, if it, and then if you add heat, uh, the thermal energy will also increase, assuming it's not doing work by expanding it. So uh, it says, and, and, my, and when I say the energy here, again, I don't mean my tank of gas. Always think of a tank of gas 
I don't mean the motion of the tank of gas itself. You know, you take a tank and then you throw it and then it's moving in the air. No, the gas cylinder is resting, it's at rest. Ignore the macroscopic potential energy of the cylinder itself or the motion of the cylinder. Those are not worried about. We're worried about the constituents, the little, yeah, the little uh, particles. So, uh, it says uh, the change in internal energy or thermal energy, change in thermal energy is the work done plus the heat. That's all. And by W, we mean what? The work done on the gas. On the gas. Good. On the gas. That's why in other textbooks, usually they would write it minus W plus Q. And by W, what do they mean? Work, work done by the gas. Yeah, good. All right. Yeah, good. I think we have it. Yeah. All right. Um, now, there are different uh, processes. So how do I keep each of them? Uh, so how do I do zero work? What kind of process would do zero uh, work? Iso volume, uh, thermal. Iso, 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 iso core. Iso core, good. Iso core. Uh, meaning that the volume is constant, right? Yeah. I, I forget your name. Yeah. Oh, Brian. Brian. Brian also uh, mentioned earlier that uh, the thermal energy is related to the motion or the temperature. Uh, the temperature is related to the motion, which is related to the thermal energy. Uh, the thermal energy would be zero in an isothermal process. By isothermal process. Okay. And then Q is zero in what's called adiabatic process. In other words? Adiabatic. Adiabatic. Yeah. I think the usually the American English they say adiabatic, and the British I think they say the adiabatic. Yeah. So whatever it is, it's this one. Q is equal to zero. So how do you have an adiabatic process by insulating your? Uh, because remember what, what the Q is, it's heat. And heat flows because of the difference in temperature. So you have to be in contact with a heater, with a heater or a burner or some kind something hotter than you, something that has a higher temperature than you, then you gain heat. Or maybe something cooler than you, then you lose heat. But if you're insulated from them, you cannot the heat will not flow from you to them or them to you. And that's uh, where the adiabatic process. And so we haven't dealt with this one yet, okay? And uh, we're going to uh, get to it uh, in a little bit. So we're going to talk, yeah, we're going to talk uh, still <laughs> uh, about uh, calorie metric. You have done this probably in chemistry. Yeah, MC delta T. You add, uh, you add heat to, let's say, Let's say I have an ice cube, and it's at minus 20 degrees Celsius. You know that ice melts at what degrees? Yeah. Zero. Yeah. So here is 